All right, guys, today we have uh, Jared from Wild Heart Nutrition here. And um, Jared, you're a black belt in Jiu Jitsu, um, have a background in sustainability. Um, and right now, what you're working on is Wild Heart Nutrition, which is a supplement brand, basically, right? Yeah. And uh, like, kind of let's go back into your background and see like where this whole originated from and where you know, how you started on your entrepreneurial journey and you know, how you got here today yeah man um i actually uh went to the university of missouri and got business uh education um i got an undergraduate in business and mba in finance um i did that uh after some time in the army and um and i also got into i think from the army and from some of the stress of that and some of the like other anger and stuff I had throughout my life, I just got more into meditation and really found that. Yeah. And then I started finding, um, I just started being really drawn to nonviolence, and then I became really drawn to sustainability. Mm -hmm. And um, all that's kind of connected to me, you know, mm -hmm. like um, we are just one biosphere on this planet. You know, mm -hmm. we are just like uh, some goo on this planet. There's the soil and we're made of, of the soil. Mm -hmm. There's uh, the air, you know, I. I breathe out the air, the tree breathes it in, and it gets it back to me, like, where do my lungs really end? Right. Where does my body really end? Right. You know what I mean? Like, um, we're all just connected in that way, and I think the the meditation, the mindfulness helped me kind of see that, and that mm -hmm. naturally made me environmentalist, and the, the nonviolence pledge that I took after seeing so much human on human violence mm -hmm. in Iraq um, really got me to uh, veganism and um, as well, so. Uh, these all all are things that we're bringing to Wild Heart Nutrition. Like uh, we're gonna have a all vegan uh, line, and we're also going to have bioplastics. Which I've been thinking about this for years. About what are we gonna do to get rid of plastics? We can reduce, we can reuse, we can do all these things that we're supposed to do. We can use bulk containers, all these things. I started doing these things, but um, my wife and I uh, we're trying to go zero waste. Mm -hmm. Like that's a hundred times harder than going vegan. <laughs> It's like even next level. Yeah, I can only imagine. I've tried going vegan and I've done it for a, weeks at a time. And I just find that it's like past that. I'm like, what do I, what's like a new recipe that I can make for something that I can eat? So I'm always looking at your Instagram and awesome. um, yeah, seeing like getting some ideas on how I can make my lifestyle more vegan and eco-friendly because it's definitely something that I resonate with. And that's why Wild Heart Nutrition is something that, you know, I resonate with as well because, you know, everything you said to this point of like how we have to live cohesively with the environment. Yeah, I mean, if you look at my background, like I always try to align my business interests with um, people that are in that same sphere because I think that no matter what, if you look at the longevity of things, like you're gonna have to eventually get to a point where everything is sustainable, right. where you can prolong life, basically. Um, There's no other choice. Yeah. There's absolutely no other way to do it. Right. We're like, we can't use fossil. We're using fossil fuels to make plastics, and what a lot of people don't know is we're using natural gas. Mm -hmm. Um, to make a lot of these and so we're fracking for this we can't just keep fracking our planet you know yeah. we can't and we can't just keep extracting finite fossil fuels either mm -hmm. so it'll have to be solved and what I realized is that most of our waste was just coming down to being food waste and uh, plastic or food waste mm -hmm. the bread wrapper the wrapper inside the cereal and we have kids too so we're always having to, we're having to feed extra mouths you know and right. so we really looked at our trash and our trash, that's all that's in there. So now we're taking our food waste and we're composting it. Uh -huh. And now we have just food plastics. Right. As right. A, it's like, if we could solve this problem. So I had a buddy uh, that I met through jujitsu and he was taking some private lessons from me mm -hmm. and just for a short while. And then we connected over veganism because he, you know, being vegan, his name's Stephen Kirby and he's into sustainable investing as uh -huh. well. And so we kind of had that similar finance background as well too, mm -hmm. and uh, wanted to do something better. We both kind of done standard kind of corporate stuff, and we, we were both kind of met our goals in that area. And we were like, we need to take the capital that we have accrued, we need to take the experience we have accrued, and we need to point at something useful that motivates us, yep. that builds the future that I want to see for my kids, and he wants to see for his kids. Mm -hmm. Something that is um, a more peaceful planet, and that's going to involve how we handle our resources. That's all connected, man. Yep. So, um, and I, I, I looked at other solutions, but really these bioplastics are really, I think something we're going to have to need for the future because of barrier properties and all these other properties that plastics, plastics are great, mm -hmm. you know, but we just have to do better with them and we have to create new 
streams. Like we have to create new uh, supply chains. Yeah, like instead of throwing stuff to a landfill, we have to have more composting facilities. Mm -hmm. We have to, mm -hmm. and so all these are connected. We're getting connected with composting facilities and stuff. But when well, you were in Kansas City, did you uh, connect with any of the composting people down there? Because I know they've got a big presence. Yeah, no, but I was motivated to see that they have um, a composting program, Compost KC, I think it was called, or something like that. Uh -huh. And uh, and uh, I saw some uh, some restaurants doing some bioplastics and stuff like that. And I thought um, that was promising uh, mm -hmm. to see. So I would like to learn more about that. Um, I'm also learning more about uh, what we have regionally and locally. Um, right. um, as you introduced me to Kabe, or yeah. you, yeah, Compost helped me make that. Yep. And yeah. I, I just was telling uh, Jordan, who I was meeting with, Jordan Jitsu okay. from, from Subspectrum. The, I was meeting with him earlier today and um, um, telling him about Kabe and about Compost Ninja. And he's thinking about making his events more sustainable. So, mm -hmm. like, I feel like. I don't know, our generation too, especially, like we're all coming up and we're trying to just rebuild stuff better. He's the, he's just running a jiu-jitsu tournament, Jordan Jitsu. And he's like, how can it be a more sustainable jiu-jitsu tournament? And how great is that? Everybody's looking at everything right, right. now. Right, exactly. So, and when you when it came to Wild Heart Nutrition, how did you pick like, okay, we want to go bioplastic route and then what were the steps you kind of got into? So, you, I mean, if you go to Wild Heart Nutrition website or your Instagram right now and you want to purchase any of the products, it's all packaged in bioplastics right now. Yep. So, um, and, you know, especially for a small company, you have to keep in mind, you know, how are we going to source these things and make it scalable? And I think that's like a lot of the issues that you're kind of facing right now, but not so much issues, but just like tech problems you have to tackle. It's the supply chain, the supply chain and stuff right now yeah. um, because of the global situation. Mm -hmm. and. Um, um, trying to track down every little ingredient and, and certain things that we want. And also build, we're trying to build out a, a kind of robust supply chain. So when we get bigger orders, we're, we're ready for scaling. So mm -hmm. um, it's been a challenge. Uh, a lot of people have been following along that we've been trying to launch our protein for like a year. Yeah, definitely. And it's been a challenge, but um, we're working through it and it's gonna be a great protein product. And mm -hmm. it's, to us, uh, you know, we've learned to invest in the product. It's yep. an industry that we're going to clean up, not just in terms of the packaging, uh, but we want to clean it up in terms of um, every way we can. And that includes uh, uh, getting good, like good ingredients mm -hmm. from good trusted suppliers, testing for purity and potency. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do all this stuff up front. And what we found is that this is a perfect space to actually bring bioplastics is a supplement space because there's so much margin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I. I'm sure you already kind of suspected this, but these companies are making so much money. That's why they can be right. wholesaling it to someone that's then giving it 40% off and all these mm -hmm. things that you see in the supplement space. It's so, uh, there's so much margin there and we're taking that margin and we're adding about a hundred times more expensive packaging. Mm -hmm. A plastic tub for protein is so cheap. Uh -huh. It's 10 cents. Right. You know, it's, and a bioplastic, and, and a bioplastic is, at our scale, as we scale up, it'll become cheaper, but mm -hmm. it's over a dollar. Jeez, so, so you're just eating that right now. And yeah, so what I say, 100 times, I should have said 10 times. Yeah, but yeah, still. Yeah, you um, get the point. It's, and then they put the, the scoops in, at least we save on that, because uh, we're going to do no plastic scoops, uh, just right. measure. Yep. You, yeah. You've probably had some supplements before that tell you like smaller things to say, hey, this is like a teaspoon. Like, mm -hmm. I know people take creatine, and it almost never has a scoop, and it says, use a teaspoon. Right. We're gonna tell people, measure with a measuring cup mm -hmm. or buy a measuring cup from us if you need one oh. or so then it's just it's more of that uh use what you have already right i mean imagine all these scoops all the time coming down yeah, and then scoop. and they've got tiny little handles and you're you, and it's like how about a nice measuring cup mm -hmm. um there are some challenges because the scoops have a smaller circle to them mm -hmm. and so it goes into smaller containers easier so oh. you might have to use maybe a funnel right. or something like that but we're looking to actually make at some point in the future, we're going to engineer something that's more sustainable. So there'll be something coming on that that's kind of branded and yeah, it has maybe a funnel built in and some other. So we're looking at that. Definitely, too. definitely. And and I think that the innovation in this space is one of the most important things because companies like yours that choose to take on that kind of um, cost in the um, you know the beginning of your company, yeah, it, it's almost like you're branding it from the roots on how you're going to grow. Um, so when people do think wild heart nutrition, not only do they think of like, oh, great supplements, they're also thinking, you know, I'm buying from a company that cares about the planet, that cares about sustainability. And the more I see about companies coming in the public space, I see that they're trying to aim for that as their, their goal, whether, you know, 
they're accomplishing it in the best way possible. It's like questionable, but I know for a fact that the way you guys are approaching most of the problems you're dealing with in the macro scale of um, our supply chain and things like that, it's like you're doing it the right way. Um, yeah, and we're always trying to do better too. Mm -hmm. That's the thing is it's a continuous ongoing optimization. Mm -hmm. Like right now we have some of the best shipping practices that we think we can get mm -hmm. uh, and we're doing plastic free shipping and we're using recycled newspaper instead of plastic bubble wrapped and mm -hmm. pad or things that we're sending out and we're, but we'll constantly do better um, in terms of products mm -hmm. and in terms of packaging. Right on. So let's get into the products a little bit and like why you chose the certain product lines you have right now. Because um, right now there's elderberry, um, there's mushroom, yep, and there's your protein supplements you're still working on. Protein's on the way. Yep. And um, if I'm missing one, am I multivitamins on the way. We already have it developed yet. So the protein and multivitamin are developed. Um, the formulas are developed, and we've been having. 2020 is a tough was a tough year for supply chains, and it was also really tough if you're small. Right. It's tough to get started because they're trying to just service their existing accounts. So this has been the delay, and people always ask me about this part: when's protein coming? When's protein? But you know, it'll be worth the wait, hopefully. And uh, um, the the reason we started, we were able to get elderberry and um, mushroom right away. So we started with that, and. Uh, my business partner, that's what he brought. He taught me about these things. So, And really Wild Heart started when we just were acquaintances, mm -hmm. essentially, but we kind of connected over veganism and finance and stuff. What's your business partner's name? Stephen Kirby. Stephen Kirby. Yeah, and and he called me up one day, eight in the morning. He'd already been up for a few hours, and I'm kind of bummed, so I was just waking up. <laughs> and he just goes, you want to start a supplement company? And I go, yes. No, that was it, yeah. That's it. I said, yes. <laughs> and I said, but, we can't use plastic. He's mm -hmm. like, uh, okay. Because mm -hmm. he was wanting to bring these plant medicines to the world. He is a forager, a master gardener, all these things, in addition to being uh, involved in sustainable uh, investing and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, he already knew the power of these mushrooms that he's foraged for. Mm -hmm. His wife has a compromised immune system, and so they knew all about elderberry, and they had changed their life. Mm -hmm. And um, the amazing thing is, out in nature is so many amazing plants that we've had this knowledge for so long and now it's becoming popular again. People are getting into elderberry, they're getting into mushrooms, there's mm -hmm. the on it nutrition with the alpha brain and this thing and that thing and so nootropics. Yeah, yeah. nootropics. And so we wanted to get the, uh, the mushrooms out there and he, my business partner turned me on to them uh, and I'm loving it. I take them every day. I've tried them a couple of times and it's like I can tell the difference. Like my cognition is sharper, like I, can, I feel like I can focus for longer and I, I try to intermittent fast for the most part, um, so I've got my 16 hours, and I'll have a couple of the mushroom supplements. I know that it's not exactly intermittent fasting to take those, but it just helps me finish my fast off and um, without nice. like, that mental fog or any drain. Yeah, the fog is great. Mm -hmm. The lion's mane in there is especially good for that. Mm -hmm. um, and everything in there uh, is good for immunity as well. And I didn't know how much having a strong immune system was really gonna benefit me, because I'm like, I'm an athlete, so I'm looking at the sports nutrition aspect. Yep. And I didn't think that elderberry mushrooms would be helpful, really, I just yeah. that. But man, the difference between, I break my immune system down. I'll work out two, three times a day sometimes, mm -hmm. and I'll break myself down, and I never actually get broken down, because yeah. my immune system stays strong. So it's not like I'm gonna feel a little bit off the next day as much. I'm not gonna feel as, as uh, I'm not, I haven't been sick since I started taking the products, um, but I wasn't going to say a whole lot to start with because it can pretty clean, I thought, but mm -hmm. I just feel when I'm out and more, maybe more exposed to people or more exposed to a bunch of other kids or something, mm -hmm. I make sure I take extra elderberry. You can take up to five of those a day, no those way. capsules, and I, yeah. I need to get that on the label too because people have been asking me about that. It's the most yeah, but like if you feel more exposed to the day, you can take up to that many, and that's just based on the research that's been done on it and mm -hmm. how it can... Um, work as an amino modulator, which is amazing. And the adaptogens in the mushrooms are amazing, and you go on and on. So. Yeah, and, and these are all things that like your uh, business partner has kind of put together in terms of his background and things yeah. that he's like a found. Yeah. He makes these, he makes these from things he forages mm -hmm. and sends them out to everybody. And Wild Heart is, but he knows, mm -hmm. Wild Heart's his way of getting it out to even the world. Because right. he already has been making, you know, various chaga brews and uh, elderberry brews and, and all kinds of plant medicines and shipping them out to people mm -hmm. and um, other people that have compromised immune system, other people that have whatever situation, uh, whatever they're looking to improve on. He's out there and he's learning these things 
as a forager, and he's a uh, wild heart. Was I just wanted to bring that out? Yeah, I was like the one that was like, well, I've been thinking about this plastic packaging for a while, mm -hmm. and it's so serendipitous because I wouldn't have been able to get into food packaging like all that food packaging that I said in our waste mm -hmm. uh, w without the margin that supplements provides us. So we're just growing as much as we can, and we're just breaking even. Yeah, or in the red, uh -huh. you know. Really, right now we're in the red when you count our uh, our overall operating expenses. Yeah, right. so um, we're just getting and scaling and pumping our money into it. We both were lucky to meet all of our career goals already. Really, yeah. on, like in terms of the foreign corporate career goals, and we're ready to move on and make like a real impact. Of course. And so we're getting involved in other things. And Wild Heart's a, a big one for us right now that we want to um, see us making an impact by people buying our product, but we want to see other companies do better too. In the supplement space up elsewhere, right? And by us uh, giving more uh, materials to composters and, and helping build them up, mm -hmm. they'll also uh, get that support. And the people making the bags, they get that support. And yeah. the supplement companies that we work with uh, for manufacturing and other things, they they're learning about our product too. And we're like, tell other people about it. Yeah, you know, like tell other people. We don't care who uses these bags. I've had people messaging like. Hey, where'd you find this one? Or what's this one made out of? Or how's it? And we tell people everything. Mm -hmm. We tell people everything. Like right. we're a totally transparent company. Mm -hmm. It's just like we did this here and that there, and we did this there. And, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. That's awesome. Because like, even uh, I was talking to the Dover down the street, yeah. and uh, they're like with the whole compost thing, and uh, yeah. all this stuff is compostable as soon as you leave the restaurant. But it's also cohesive with the vegan lifestyle that they're doing. So if you don't know what Dover is, it's that all vegan burger restaurant and they also have like salads and pretty much everything on their menu is vegan yeah and everything they compost or all their to-go materials are all compostable yep and that's like in super um that's in line with everything that you guys are doing at wild heart and so um i was i was wondering like if there's a, something that you know kind of draws a vegan lifestyle to you know sustainability also because you know i know that a lot of it ties into you know living you know not eating meat because that's heavy on the environment. Um, your plastics, you're not getting recycled. So, um, like the whole vegan lifestyle really is in cohesion with um, the business model that they've set up and you've set up. Yeah, and if you're vegan for the animals, which is the definition of vegan, mm -hmm. you know, other people might go plant-based for the environment or plant-based for the health. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're really vegan for the animals, then uh, it starts to dawn on you as you learn more and more that there are animals um, that are you know, enslaved for food and secretions and things mm -hmm. like that. But then there are also uh, animals that end up becoming the most vulnerable to the environmental destruction that we're causing. Yep. So it's, it's like I said, it's all related. It's human suffering is related. Yep. Um, refugee crisis is related to climate change. Mm -hmm. uh, all of it's ramping up more and more. We're gonna see more conflict amongst humans. Mm -hmm. And it's always the people um, sort of, I guess at the lower rungs. So yeah. it's gonna be first the animals and nature. Uh -huh. And then it's going to be poor countries mm -hmm. and poor people in richer countries. Right. And this is why people at the top don't want to change anything, in my opinion, uh -huh. is because they've already made theirs. Um, and a lot of people, it's sad, but you know, as soon as I made my bag, I was like, you know, because I was an early investor in Tesla, and I just want to take that money and put it into Wild Heart. I want to mm -hmm. like that money was seen as let's get the world off of fossil fuels. That's right. When I heard Elon Musk say that, that's when I first bought Tesla stock in 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, 2012? Yeah, I think it's 2012. And yeah. I was like, well, I want to join this guy's mission. Mm -hmm. And now it's only right for me to take those gains and keep it going. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's like the, what you invested in from the start. I mean, uh, I was probably a couple years behind you. I was like in 2014. I was oh, nice. Like, it's still a great time. Yeah, I was, Anything like I was in high school. 2020 was a great time. I know. And the way he just spoke and, you know, his vision and how he, um, like, built businesses, I was like, this guy, you got to bet on him. He's yeah. um, extremely like, just, he's an engineer, but he's also a business person. And it's like, if you can tie those two together. He's polarizing and controversial to some people, but mm -hmm. all, he's one of the great minds of our time and that's how they always are. Yep. I learned that, you know, people hated on Isaac Newton. I mean, people hated on everybody. Yep. And, and so he takes it and he keeps moving and he's like, you know, he put an electric car in space mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> that he built. It's just like, what? what what can he do? Yeah, you know, so yeah. He basically broke the game, and so uh -huh. he's just he's just running and he's up the score. At it, you know, he's yeah. still going at it, and kind of like you were, you know, it's it's really like 
for I feel like for us, um, it's just not even about like, okay, you can get your money, you can get it. The more you can get with money is just a bigger box and more stuff to put it in. Yeah. Um, at some point you had kind of realized like, you kind of got time with the corporate stuff and I was at the same point where I was in school and I just didn't see an end to it where, you know, I wanted to do something that was, that motivated me. That's something that I resonated with. Yeah. And um, that's kind of how I met Kabe was through EcoCare. Um, while we were in a business model competition where we were doing uh, eco-friendly t-shirts for like bamboo-based, hemp-based, and organic cotton that we were gonna sell to fraternities and sororities. Um, just super like in the community, in the area, something that we could kind of get out that's cool. Quick. Um, the problem was like a lot of the shirts were Gildan or you know um, uh, these American Outfitters. They were they went out of business. Or okay. But um, it was all just cotton based shirts, and they're really. I mean, if you know anything about cotton, it's like one of the most draining things on the environment, like for, in terms of water and pesticides, and um, it just pollutes their water systems. Like I've no been other. hearing about that just like lately. I've been getting turned on to that. Yeah, yeah. And so um, so clothing, there's not a lot of good solutions because it's either made out of plastic, mm -hmm. polyester, and other things, or yeah. Cottons. Yeah, and so we're actually working on a couple of fabric companies in India right now that are fully hemp based. Um, we have scientists behind them that have like tested biocidal and biocidal treatments for them, so they can go into like hospital beddings and hospitality beddings, so like hotels and things like that. And then in, de in addition, once we have those um, product lines developed, we can actually move into fabrics for clothing. And you know, they were thinking about PPE masks as well, mm -hmm. um, just because of the whole COVID thing. And it, it can test for. Um, tested COVID negative or like resistance to COVID, um, it would be huge for hospitals and wherever else. Well, so, um, I've, I've done, you know, like climate protests and other things like that, but I've moved into business now because it just seems like the biggest tool in our toolbox. Yep. And what you're doing, that sounds amazing too. Like we're just, they say you can't have infinite growth on a finite planet mm -hmm. and that's true. Mm -hmm. But if we can close loops, mm -hmm. you can have an infinite closed loop. Right. And that's the idea behind the circular economy. And mm -hmm. so, you know, uh, things like that, where you can actually, you know, grow a bamboo like shirt, you know, and if you could actually take that shirt and break it back down into its component pieces, exactly. you could probably just compost it and mm -hmm. turn it into the, so all these is, is the bio recycling, I call it, mm -hmm. and the bio economy and um, working with nature instead of fighting nature mm -hmm. uh, and trying to find nature nature's circular. Yeah, it, it knows how to compost already. <laughs> it does it naturally. Yes. We just need to take and add some technology to this. Okay. And that's another venture I have going that hasn't seen any daylight yet is um, I'm going to go big with uh, and, and swing big. And I don't know what will come of it, but that's what I talked to Kabe about mm -hmm. um, with compost engine. I think he's on something really big out there too. Yeah, he's um, working. Because he, they, they're taking the bioplastics to the restaurants to, and they're doing um, uh, like low, using like low impact cleaners and things like that. And then mm -hmm. they're taking and collecting those when they go and do their cleaning or they go and drop off things and they collect food waste and bioplastics, mm -hmm. which happen to pair really well together because we have nitrogen rich food waste and carbon rich bioplastics. Mm -hmm. Those you need carbon plus nitrogen rich goods to compost and they're composting them. And then he acquired compost engine, I thought, this guy's really on it. Like he's creating, he's creating his own little circle yep. of the circular economy as a proof of concept. It just needs scale, and so mm -hmm. stuff like that really inspires me. And uh, the circular economy is where it's at. So yeah, ecology and you know how you can tie all that stuff together. Absolutely, and it's great to see that you know you guys are pushing the envelope on that as well because there's so much innovation that definitely does need to happen. And you know, like you were saying, um, how everything kind of ties in. The best way to engineer things I've seen is like to build it based off of nature. Yeah, um, she's been running her algorithm a lot longer, right? <laughs> right. And she's been optimizing everything, you know. To the max. Yeah, as okay. I gender, because I don't know what this is called nature, but. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, it, the optimization algorithm is called, it's an evolutionary algorithm. Mm -hmm. And some people even use that in engineering. Mm -hmm. They something called it a genetic programming, they call it, where they just let multiple generations improve on each other. Mm -hmm. And so nature's got a lot of things figured out, but we're just, it's more intelligent than us. They say we're the most intelligent being on the planet. You yeah, know, yeah. evolution itself is the intelligence. Too. Yeah, yeah. But that's absolutely fascinating. And uh, I mean, before we wrap things up, like if there's any, uh, your social media sites or your website that people can reach you guys out on. Yeah, so Wild Heart Nutrition, we're at wildheartplants.com. Mm -hmm. um, we chose plants because the bags are made of plants and the compost grows new plants and we're trying to make our own little circular economy. Yep. Um, and you can follow me on Instagram. I'm toeholdyou, 
mm -hmm. total hold you all one word. And um, I'm on Facebook too. Um, my name is Jared Appenzeller. If you search me, I do a lot of public posts on there. Mm -hmm. I don't use social media to share like kid pictures or anything like that. Yeah. I just put some vegan stuff and some business stuff and some jujitsu stuff. And that's like my social media. So if you're right. interested in that, check it out. Yeah. Protein's coming out here soon. Protein's and coming out soon. And it's going to compete with whey protein. Mm -hmm. We're designing in such a way that there won't be that performance gap. Uh -huh. You know, we're really uh, interested in high performance and great tasting. And so we're taking our time. And like I said, we're right now, profit is not on the radar. We're just trying to get the best thing put together and that will take care of itself. 100%. 100%. And uh, best of luck with everything. Glad to have you on the podcast and have you on the show. Um, uh, I guess that's uh, that's about it for now. Man, thank you very much. Me. This was Appreciate fun. It. This is a great conversation. Absolutely.